Uh, let's talk about Hampton in just one more second, Stephen. So, look, they're I. I'd bet everything, uh, you know, their their AD is not sitting there like, oh, wow, now we have to find the football coach. I had no idea we'd be in this position. Look, they, they talked about at their press conference that this move to the Big South, they've been talking about that for three years. And I'm quite sure that there's a complete plan that, that goes along with this is how we're going to roll into the Big South. And I would right. be certain that they have a wish list of who their coach is going to be uh, when they make that move, they might still have to play a MEAC schedule next year and not uh, get right. really full into the Big South into 2019. And that's most likely what's going to happen. What do you think that wish list might look like uh, for Hampton now that they're coming out of the MEAC and, and integrating, for lack of a better term, into the Big South? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's. There's been a lot of speculation, you know, them moving out of a primarily HBCU conference. Being, you know, they helped found the CIAA in 1912, and then when they did go Division One, they uh, they went to the MEAC, which is a big feather in their cap. Uh, but now they're going to the Big South, new year, new decade, new I mean, not, not a new decade, but a new a new day. And uh, there's been some speculation that uh, you know we'll definitely may see a coach, uh, uh, just say for I would say it, a, a white coach. Um, you know, which, you know, we've had white coaches in the HBCU uh, world before. You know, we had, uh, you know, over at Alcorn State, uh, you know, they, they had uh, Coach Hopkins, and he worked out very well for them. Uh, helped make them a swag East Tower and get them to the swag championship game in the Celebration Bowl. Uh, so that worked out well for them. And look, I mean, at the end of the day, people want to win. Uh, but there is the feeling at, that Hampton is uh, trying to uh, cross over. You know, continue its crossover appeal. You know, they they cross over from the HBCU conference. Uh, would they be over looking to cross over? Uh, you know, into uh, into uh, a majority coach. Uh, you know, you don't know, but that's speculation. Well, we'll what, what is their out. what is their most iconic moment in Hampton history? When the average person thinks of Hampton, what do you think the first thing is that comes to their mind? They think of that 2001 uh, NCAA tournament game. Uh, Steve Murfield, uh, I think it's his name. He led Hampton to the uh, to the big time upset over Iowa State. You see those guys lifting him up in the air. So, yep, heel, heels, yeah. bottom of his soles <laughs> facing the camera or, or, or very visible in the shot. So look, if if that's the move, I mean, look. Everyone is free, uh, and if they want to have a more diversified look, look. If you have a, if the coach Already is good, made. that that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah, I think that you know it's it's not a black or white thing per se. Whereas you know you you you're all in your feelings about it. I think it's just more of a strategy, and we're just you know talking hypothetical here because we don't know, and that's what people do on on podcasts. But you know you go into to the Big South. That that is a a direct move that is a move of diversification, like. You're trying to broaden your appeal, uh, and the thought press I, thought process I would think is: Look, if you're an HBCU fan, we don't have to sell you on Hampton. You know who we are. Look at our our history, our legacy right. from the CIAA to the MEAC. If you have an emotional connection to Hampton, that's not going to stop. Howard fans are still going to throw shade at Hampton. That's still going to be a rival. Same thing for uh, Norfolk State. If you have, if you like Hampton, you're still going to want to go there or send your kids there if that's your thing. So, uh, I would not be surprised if, you know, their game plan moving forward is to, you know, really shake things up because moving to the big South was a a pretty big (laughs) shakeup, you know, to say the least. It it was. Yeah. I mean, I think really more than anything, I think there's optics. Uh, you know, there's optics, you know, they talk about that in politics all the time about how to how to see look. Uh and so if they if they do go if they do go that way and, and find and there's plenty of qualified white coaches out there, obviously. Um so if they do go that way though, uh, you know, there will be that perception for a lot of people that uh, you know, they're really trying to move away from being an H B C U you know that it, it, it would end optimistically. You know what I mean? Uh, there'll always be an HBCU, but you know there, and we've seen cases of that. You know, before and and other HBCUs that are still HBCUs, but they have uh, so like, kind so of like, crossed like, over, like West Virginia State. West Virginia State is an HBCU, right. but if you didn't know that, you might not know uh, because they have a, right. a, a diversified look. Uh, and you know, think about this. You know, going that's going to change Hamptons recruiting. 
to some degree, being in a different different conference, there's new eyes, uh, different exposure, and I'm sure, right. I'm quite sure that Hampton um, and you know their leadership does not want to go into the Big South just to have people say, "Oh, Hampton's coming! Can't wait to see the band." You know, they don't want to be right. the, the band right. and dancing school. The band but, school, yeah. yeah. That's not that's not what they want. I mean, they want to have a great band, but they don't want people to think that's all that they offer. So. Uh, it will be very interesting to see how all of this develops. And one last thing out of the Big South, Presbyterian announced this week that they're dropping out of FCS football, uh, out of the Big right. South football-wise. So that's another chess piece that we didn't know about initially, but it makes even more sense when you see all the moves that they're making as some people are going and some people are coming. So they, they if so, not... Yeah, go ahead. So that would leave them with six. So that would leave them with six. Because last week we were saying seven because Liberty is leaving. Well, you got Campbell uh, coming. Be- you got Campbell coming in next year, and then you have uh, okay. North Alabama joining the schedule. So they'll they'll be fine with that six, but they didn't want to have that. You you always want to be on the plus side. <laughs> you don't want to be right. You don't right. Be cutting, cutting it close. Right. Yeah. Well, that goes to well. Then that's the next thing is you know is there. Will there be? Will they be? Are they through targeting teams from the MEAC? Um, I think that uh, you know they've always been rumbling. You know they've always been rumbling. You know people talk about message boards, and you know if you believe the message boards, then Alabama State would be headed to the flag right now all the time. So they're always accurate. Sometimes they are, and they have been rumbling that maybe North Carolina A and T uh, at some point will look to get out of the the MEAC and join a, a more regional conference. And so uh, they would definitely be within the Big South footprint. And uh, there's also the thought process that maybe at this point, uh, because of their rivalry and, and, and the level that has gotten to national attention, uh, you know, since uh, North Carolina Central has come to the MEAC, uh, that maybe that they're packing still. So, I mean, you know, it's all speculation right now at this point. I haven't heard anything from anybody that matters and says that that's going to be the case. But... If it did, I mean, I think, you know, losing Hampton, it, losing to Better State last year, it's like, oh, okay, you know, they tried, you know, it's sad to see him go, okay. Losing Hampton this this week, I think people's initial reaction to it was, well, if they want to go, the hell with them, you know what I mean? And then, you know, but it was kind of like, oh, that hurt, you know yeah, what that, I mean? That, 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 that hurt was a little bit more. That was your feelings talking, though, you know, kind of like, yeah. When you, get, when you got that pretty girlfriend, you're like, man, forget her. <laughs> And then you're going to cry when you yeah, get home. Yeah, <laughs> like she's going to be back. You know, she'll be back. She'll be back. Like, like they you said know, in that, Friday. That was, like they said in Friday. He's going to cry when he get in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, man, I mean, you know. And, again, you know, but if they were to, hypothetically, if they were to lose North Carolina a and and North Carolina Central, I don't know that you could have them yet anymore because it would no longer be almost the Mid-Atlantic Athletic Conference. But then you would, you know, then you'd be looking at, okay, you got Florida schools, down there, you got South Carolina State on its own island, and it will be nothing in North Car- nothing in North Carolina, only Virginia, only North State in Virginia, and well, then you know the you up know, North I, school. I think the ACC set the precedent with that when they tried to get Texas in there. It's like, yeah, we're going to be the ACC with Texas. It didn't work out, and then they get Notre Dame. So uh, that Atlantic coast uh, is very configurable on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have right. to take it literally. Hey, right. I was in. Um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Now, I was just going to switch. Yeah, that would be a big switch. hole in the MEAC. Yeah, yeah, it will for sure. 